JFK dropping. I could say anti-Semitic things and Adidas can't drop me. Now what? Now what is that? Despite that claim you just heard Kanye West make, Adidas, in fact, did drop him, ending his partnership, uh, their partnership with a rapper, a move that Adidas says will cost the company around a quarter billion dollars this year alone. Well, Adidas is just the latest company to cut ties with Ye over his recent anti-Semitic remarks. It may be triggering to some people, but you can see how much of an impact Kanye has had stemming from a series of tweets where Wes said he would go, quote, death con three on Jewish people, which appeared to lead to these anti-Semitic banners above a freeway in Los Angeles saying Kanye is right about the Jews. Well, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League spoke earlier on CBS News about West's comments and the public reaction to it. But like anti-black, anti-black racism or anti-Asian hate, anti-Semitism needs to be called out clearly and cogently. So bravo to, you know, companies that have now stepped up and pushed back on Kanye. And I hope this sends a signal once and for all that this is simply unacceptable. J.D. Durkin joins us now. He is the host of The Street. It's good to have you. So Kanye West, now known as Ye, is one of the most profitable music artists. Along with his merchandise and design career, he actually was on the Forbes billionaire list. Was. But <laughs> was, according to Forbes. Tell us how much will Adidas and all these other sponsors, including his, his agency dropping their partnerships with him, impact his wealth? I think it's going to impact his wealth uh, significantly. And thank you for having me here, uh, by the way. It's worth noting that, you know, for his astounding music catalog that really only accounts for about 115 or $120 million of his entire net worth, there's some stocks and, and liquid assets he has as well. But the vast majority of his multi-billion dollar net worth has come from these corporate sponsorships with names like Adidas and The Gap. And I do want to point out, whenever you talk about a story like this, this is deeply personal. This is deeply human to people. There are members of the Jewish community who perhaps feel less safe because this rhetoric has been emboldened. And I do want to establish that I think whenever you have a story like this, that is undoubtedly the most important part of the story, who is being impacted, of secondary focus. And yes, I'm broadcasting from the floor of the stock exchange, of course. This is also a business story with very serious repercussions for Adidas and his other partners moving ahead. I just wanted to make sure I highlighted that, of course, this is something that is causing a lot of concern for a lot of people. With regards to the end of impact, I think it remains to be seen. But this is something like you just said there that Kanye West himself or Ye has said, I can spout whatever I want through the lens yeah. of anti-Semitism and nothing's going to happen from the company. That's clearly uh, not the reality he woke up to today. And, you know, J.D., uh, Kanye and Adidas had some trouble in the recent past. I mean, they had put his uh, the partnership under review. It took a while for them to actually finally drop him, uh, which a lot of people saw as, you know, perhaps uh, an embrace of the things he had said by the company that has a troubled history with the Jewish people. So my question is, Adidas says that they own the Yeezy designs. Kanye has put that to question in the past. Who owns what? And do you see this moment where Adidas drops him as the beginning of a long legal battle between the two parties? I, I think this is the first day we're talking about it, and it will not be the last. You're right, Kanye said, well, look, the trademark for Yeezy is mine, and that's arguably, he, he, he and his, argues, his lawyers would argue that's where the money is. Well, Adidas has responded to say, we actually are the sole owners of the design rights. So I expect this to get very messy, very litigious. I'm sure there are more than a few lawyers whose phones have been ringing off the hooks all morning, both here and in Germany and throughout uh, countries around the world there as well. You know, this point about uh, Adidas being first to come out and say, you know, we'll take this under review. They may have been the first company working with Kanye to say that, but you just played sound there from Mr. Greenblatt at the ADL. The Anti-Defamation League has said to Adidas, what more is there to review? What yeah. more do you need to see? Yeah. What more does this man need to say Take a lead from CAA, from Balenciaga, from Vogue magazine, from his other sponsorships or partners like J.P. Morgan Chase, who have said this is simply a bridge too far. This type of hate speech must unequivocally be condemned. Adidas was the first company to say, well, it's under review. Perhaps they were waiting for Kanye West to issue a mea culpa, to apologize, they, to have an about face. That about face so. never came. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt, but I, I believe when it comes to the timing, J.D., and correct me if I'm wrong, I think they did so after he wore the White Lives Matter shirt, not exactly after the anti-Semitic comments. And, you know, and, and Adidas has faced a lot of backlash for its history now that this has come up. 
Uh, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And, and, and those were comments there. And Mr. Greenblatt even addressed them to say the Anti-Defamation League has addressed just what was on his shirt simply as hate speech. And of course, the comments got uh, got worse and worse with all of those subsequent and follow up. So it remains to be seen how this whole thing is going to play itself out. But I do expect it to be very messy and very public as well. This is a man who, you know, if he is offered a microphone, which right now it tends to come from more conservative circles, he's going to use those opportunities apparently here to double and triple down. This whole conversation may change long into the future as the dust settles if he is sincere with an apology moving forward. Uh, but for now, I think the company simply saw the, the situation it was in. By the way, this is a company that has faced a lot of headwinds economically before all of this. There are difficulties in China with regards to the supply chain. There's a huge glut of inventory here in the West. They're going to have to unload a ton of money to promote the products that they have. That's, a, that's a, a, a challenge that a lot of big box retailers have. And there's a lot of seasonality for Q4. We're entering the heart of the holiday season. This is a time when Adidas wants to be focused. They do have the World Cup coming up which might be a yeah. little bit of a tailwind working to their benefit because they sponsor some of the biggest athletes and teams at the World Cup. That, that uh, but ultimately, me. they were clear to say $250 million will likely be the cost for Q4 alone. It's, yeah. it's an expensive uh, quarter billion for Adidas at this point. The big question now, and we'll talk about it later, J.D., we got to let you go, is can...